Top Tip Tuesday time, Bob here from Insidium. On today's video, we're diving into X particles and Nexus, and we're going to be making an abstract fluid simulation. This is good for kind of MoGraph logo or object reveals. We'll be using a load of different modifiers and some other techniques like data mapping to get this effect to work. So let's jump into cinema and we'll begin. In our scene, we have this X collider geometry. You can see that was just a cutout using a bool. It's cut out an X primitive with a sphere. So we're gonna look at that in a moment. Let's have a look at our basic scene. We have got an XP emitter and we are emitting particles in hex mode for 30 frames. Uh, we've got a radius of two, speed of zero. And you can see, because we've got a fluid solver in this scene, we're getting a fluid solve. And in that NX fluids, we've got it set to SPH mode. And we've just upped the substeps one to four. And we have um, set check density and the rest of it is default. Then we've got an NX gravity set to 700 centimeters. And that is giving us this fluid solve. Okay. Um, we have our sphere collider here and we've got a collider tag on with the normals obviously set to inside so it traps that in and what we want to do is well, we're going to introduce our X collider which is inside our sphere as an additional collision object but not just yet so we'll make it invisible. What we want to do is let this fluid settle because we want it to start with the fluid in almost a static state. So let's just leave that playing for a bit till it's settled, something like that. And we're going to go to our emitter object and we're going to go to the initial state tab here. Uh, here are the emitter settings, initial state. We're going to use the state and then set state, which loads in. This is our initial state of particles. Now that we've saved that, we can just go to the emission tab and switch all of this emission mode off because this will make more particles. So in this, let's put this on controlled only, which means it's just going to load in this state. Let's have a look. Go to the first frame. Yep, it's loaded it in there, look. And that's where we're going to start our sim from. Now what we can do is go to our nexus tools and we want to kind of make this look like it's almost boiling over time and we're going to do it with an nx vorticity modifier we're going to put the radius on say 150 maybe and we're going to put our strength quite strong let's say we're going to go with 2000 but we're going to limit the force at vorticity is an accumulative um, strength and so it can get out of control so we want it to be really strong but you want to limit that strength and we can do that just by putting a limit here let's put this on 100 now if I hit play you're going to see that very quickly we're getting to this almost boiling point and this looks pretty cool doesn't it but we want it to build to this point so the way we can do that is with data mapping we can map this strength to the age of the particle let's go to the mapping tab we're going to put an age map in and uh, look, the parameter is by default set to the right one. Strength is what we're mapping. And we're going to say over a 150 frame period. So from when the particles are zero frames old up to 150. And then our graph, that frame has been um, mapped to the X axis of this. So zero frames old up to 150. And the Y axis is our strength from zero strength to full strength. So by default, this is saying particles that are zero frames old have no vorticity strength. And as they get older, they get more up until 150 frames and above where they have full vorticity strength. So now if we have a look at that, we'll see that we haven't really got any and it builds and builds and then we get something like that. So that's pretty cool. What you could do, we could move this across, couldn't we? So we get more of that more kind of still fluid and then it gradually gets stronger there it goes and then we start getting our boiling point very cool so then once we've got to full vortic uh, vorticity strength we want a bit of an explosion in here so let's go to nexus we're going to bring in an nx explode where are you um explode there you are and what we want to do is we want to use the modifier target itself this bit as our kind of uh, directional force so we need to do explode away from not the particle mass center from this modifier so it'll explode away from this central point let's put this speed on pretty high I'm going to put this on maybe a thousand with 800 variation let's put it down here so it's going to blast it upwards and we want not always on we want this to happen at a scene time at frame 150 
So now we'll get our initial state of particles. Then they'll start to bubble and boil with our vorticity. Then we get to frame 150 and we get an explosion. Very cool. Now at this point, we want to start blowing them around so they start whizzing around the inside of our sphere. So we're going to go to Nexus and we're going to bring in an NX wind. The wind we're going to put in von Karman mode, which gives nice gusts. We're going to put this quite strong. Let's put this up at, say, 800. Uh, we're going to go to our turbulence and actually switch the turbulence off because we're getting loads of kind of turbulent movement from that vorticity. So we don't need extra turbulence. And then at the moment, this is just all blowing in this plus X direction. So if we hit play, you'll see, look, they're just getting blown over in that direction. And uh, that's not actually what we want. We want them to be going in all different directions. So let's go to our NX wind tags. We're going to put an animation tag on there, a vibrate, and we're going to enable rotation. Let's put 360 in each axis. Uh, the frequency doesn't need to be that fast. Let's put that on 0.5. So now we have got our wind kind of animating around like this. Cool. But we want to do the same trick as we did with the strength of our um, vorticity. We want to map this because we don't want any wind strength at the beginning. So let's go to our NX wind mapping tab, add an age map. We want to map the wind strength to the particle age. And we just want to almost just switch this off and then on. So we want it to be off up to frame 150. So let's put let's put 150. And then we want it to go on at frame 151. So that's saying, yeah, anything of an age below 150 has zero wind strength. And then between 150 and 151, it goes up to full wind strength. So let's have a look, hit play. Yep, the wind is doing absolutely nothing there to our particle sim. Getting our vorticity and boiling, explosion, and then the wind is nicely kind of animating and moving that around our sphere. And if you want it to be have more impact and make it whoosh right over the top, you can increase that wind speed. Let's do that, actually. I'm going to put that wind speed up to, say, 1,200. So finally, we have our X... Uh, geometry that we want to be a collider as well on the inside of this sphere so let's go to that tags extensions insidium collider take off the bounce we want it to be outside this time yep that's right hit play and here we have got our final fluid sim coming to a boil with our vorticity then exploding, obviously interacting with our X. And now the wind is getting it to move around that sphere and slosh around. Excellent. So that is the basis of our fluid sphere simulation using a few different modifiers. And most of the control in this one is by using some pretty simple but very effective data mapping techniques.